which is uh, somewhat coy. We're going to be talking about Gutenberg basically the entire day, but we didn't want to put Gutenberg in the title because we figured a lot of people would turn away and not know. Uh, so we're talking about the future of WordPress development, which for the immediate future means Gutenberg development. So we're going to show off lots of cool things with that. Um, we've got some practical code examples in the afternoon, which um, I'm going to be showing off how to create your very first Gutenberg block. My name is Brian Richards, by the way. I probably should have started with that. Um, beside me here are the other speakers. I'm going to pass the mic to them. Um, but we wanted to get all of our faces up here because for the three of us who aren't presenting, uh, we'll be around the room. So if you get stuck or need help, uh, which will probably only really happen in the afternoon, um, flag us down, put up your hand, we'll come and see if we can help you get unstuck wherever you are. So my name is Brian, I'm, I'm leading the very first session after lunch for creating your first block. I'm gonna skip Greg, he can introduce himself because he's speaking first. Howdy y'all, my name is Zach Gordon and I'm going to be talking after Greg today, so he's gonna do a high level introduction into what's coming down the pike with Gutenberg and beyond. And then I'm going to begin transitioning us into the code sessions that we're doing in the afternoon, explaining all the high-level libraries that ship with Gutenberg, how to access them, uh, what a basic block looks like from a you know programming level and a user interface level. And then we'll kick it off um, to Brian and Josh. I also want to say Andrew right there. Can you raise your hand, my friend? He could also answer your questions. And anybody else played around with Gutenberg block development already a little bit? Okay, <laughs> Triple J all the way in the back, hand up to ask him all your questions. So yeah, I'll be sitting in the back if uh, you get stuck or have anything, happy to help. Hi everybody, I'm uh, Josh Pollock. I'm going to be following Brian this afternoon, so he's gonna be showing like a basic block with a, maybe like one editable control. Yeah. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of take something similar, paste it into a more sophisticated setup with Webpack and everything and then show how to, you know, use fancier ES6 syntax, how to use JSX, how to break your block plugin up into smaller components that can be reused, how to make stuff actually show up in the front end. So kind of we're going to end on how to start getting advanced, um, and that should get you towards uh, more experimentation when you get home and play with the stuff. Uh, so I'm going to hand it off to Greg. One more thing. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I just want to uh, put, put it down <laughs> because I have my own. We have lots of documented resources that we'll be sharing. Um, you should take notes because those are always better, right? You can learn from your own notes. But um, if you get stuck and like you just can't progress during the day, feel free to just close your laptop and follow along. Um, and all of our resources will get linked and shared out to all of you via email. So you can repeat this lesson on your own as many times as you want from home at your own pace. And it's also being live streamed and recorded, so everything is going to be super well documented for you. And so now to Greg to kick things okay, off. Okay, thank you. So hello everyone. Today we are going to take a peek into the future of WordPress development and learn about all the changes that the year 2018 will bring. And before we start, let me introduce, introduce myself. My name is Grzegorz Zhukowski, uh, but you can also call me Greg. I work at Automatic and I'm extremely lucky to be on the team which is fully focused on WordPress core development. And be, before we discuss the upcoming changes in WordPress, let's talk a bit about history to understand better why there was an interesting thing, how users interact and add content into WordPress. Uh, the initial work on WordPress started in early 2003, which is over 15 years ago. And the very first integration with WYSIWYG Editor, which is the way of presenting content inside the editor, exactly the same as user will see on the website, uh, was brought into WordPress into 2.0 release, which was a long, long ago at the end of the year 2005. It was powered by Tiny MC Engine, and uh, it's still present there as of today. In fact, the page you see hasn't changed much since then. Uh, but there was need to come up with much more advanced solutions because WordPress was evolving from the blogging platform into a fully advanced uh, website builder. And that's why some new concepts were introduced. S things like short codes, custom fields, meta, meta posts, attributes, uh, custom post times, and this all brings uh, 
those change to WordPress that it whenever someone was editing the content they didn't quite see the same representation as the user browsing the website and there was uh, there need to fix that arrived so some plugins started to fix that this is example how the same shortcode that you've seen before is transformed inside the tiny mc editor by the jetpack plugin there also was new concept introduced like embeds which uh, basically magically transform your link into the preview of some external content and you know, there's also customizer which is a completely different story and has its own user interface which differs completely from whatever you've seen before and there's also another concept you need to learn when you are developing WordPress like widgets and also there is a whole different story with editing uh, your website where you have sort of direct manipulation of data but in fact you have all those forms on the side of your page when you enter your data as you can see all that started to be very disconnected different and that's why a few years back discussion has started how to fix that and uh, there were many places where those discussions started on work camps uh, on slack on uh, forums etc etc and uh, the outcome of that is was that Matt and uh, Molenweg announced a Gutenberg project at the World Camp uh, US in 2016 and this is the new editing and publishing experience for WordPress but this is it's important to mention that that is only the first phase because the next one coming next is customization and the idea behind the Gutenberg is to unify all the concepts we just discussed under the umbrella term block and uh, there is also a reference to my mystery meat inside this quote you've seen before uh, it all is all about those embeds or plugins that change something inside the editor which user isn't aware of or can have an, an issue to uh, recreate on another website and it's also very important to mention that Gutenberg is perhaps the largest change to the WordPress experience in its history so that's why we have full day workshops dedicated mostly to Gutenberg uh, this is how the new editor looks like when you open it inside your browser uh, at this screen there are two blocks uh, so here you have paragraph and the other one on the page is uh, embed there can be different kind of blocks so anything you add to your uh, website like uh, galleries uh, images uh, lists head headers stuff like this this all will be uh, represented as its own independent block uh, also the key here uh, placeholders are key here because uh, user needs to know how to input the data like it should be intuitive you need to, to guess look inside the toolbars to provide uh, the way to to change your content and I very important thing is that there needs to be identical representation inside the editor and also uh, when the user visits your website and there there is also uh, this idea that every block can provide a, a very basic customizations like change for fonts colors and stuff like this and uh, at the moment the drag and drop is supported for files but we are also uh, very far in the development of having drag and drop support for blocks so you will be able to move them inside the editor which will be very handy if you want to reorganize your uh, content uh, as I said the key point is to have uh, uh, straightforward and intuitive way of creating contact, content. content. Uh, very important part is accessibility here to be able to interact with, with WordPress uh, for people with, with some disabilities. Uh, also, mobile devices are very like everyone is using mobile devices to browse the pages. So, this editor also works on mobile devices. So this is very important because what we have now it's quite uh, hard to m manage. 
and maybe let me show it in action I just need to mirror the screen so first be before uh, I start I have an the old post prepared which was written with the classic editor oh yes sure thank you actually I can do a full screen Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> That's quite unexpected. Yeah. Uh, this part, the black one, is not that important. <laughs> uh, so this is like, this is whatever you see in the old editor, which is, if you see visual representation, it looks sort of this. To achieve that, you need to provide very, very strange tricks with HTML source code. And on the page, it looks like this. It's a sort of similar. Now let's open the same inside Gutenberg. So as you can see, this, the same content is here. We, we have also a, a, a possibility to change the source code and it looks exactly the same but what we have here is one big block and there is a functionality which allows to convert those the single block into multiple blocks as you can see here and as I'm navigating you have you see paragraphs this is image this is heading all of them have here different toolbars so if you can see this is everything related to header There are also some things that allow you to change everything and it's reflected automatically on your page. You can also go with full screen. There are many things like this. And there is also this concept of sidebar uh, which provides advanced settings. As you can see on the right side, there are additional features like drop cup. So in this block, let me scroll it to better present this. The first letter is bigger now. You can also change the font size. You can change also the background. You can make it this way. And you can see now that there, is, there are some hints, like uh, this one is for accessibility, which tells you that this is probably not the best idea to do it like this. So you can change it. You can also go full screen and it looks like this and when you pre preview the, this page this looks like this Oh no. Uh, at the moment it's like this. About I guess it might scale with the font size, but I'm not a designer. <laughs> so I, I have no idea. Um, okay, another thing I would, li would like to show is like uh, I have this there's there are different places to insert new content. So as you can see here at, at the bottom, I'm now starting to uh, type and I will provide a footer. And now I want it to have it centered and also want to have much wider and maybe let's also change the, to make it like this. 
And what I can do also with Gutenberg, I can store it inside database and convert it to shared block, give it a, give it a name, and the same block will be available to insert using inserter. If I go here, I have the same block. What's even nicer about this, if I change something here and save, it will also change another one. And let me go also to the create a new post now. So I have prepared some content which is inside external document. I can copy it and as you can see all the links are preserved so we, we want to have support for Markdown for Google Docs. Most of them are working already but it will improve. Now I want to make this content look a bit nicer. There is also this con concept on transforming blocks. You can transform blocks into something different. In this case, let's change it to, uh, to the cover image, which is completely new concept. And let's add some nice background. I can change also the dimming, also make it full screen to look my, much better. You can also, as I said, drag and drop some images like this. And this converts automatically inside the gallery. And again, you have still a lot of possibilities what to do with this gallery, make it wider, change the columns. Like every block can have their own set of uh, settings. Another thing that is you can move those blocks. So it's quite easy. You can also uh, select multiple blocks and do some transformation like this you can turn into a list. Uh, also there is the couple of placeholders. I mean inserters. So you can also insert from the top of your site the same footer we saw before. And the uh, last thing I wanted to present is slash inserted. So you can start typing slash and then you will have uh, some hints what you can add here. So in this case I added columns which is still experimental but it allows you to nest blocks inside and you can also add images here. And you can do like write do completely different things in here. Another thing, a nice feature that I would like to show, uh, which to show it, I need to switch to another post because I don't have too many he headers. Uh, it's table table of content. As you can see here, you can see the outline of your uh, content. Also, when you change that to something different, it will automatically update. It also gives hints if there is something that is not working as it should be. Okay. How do I mirror now? Okay. Let's get to the technical part, which is probably something you most expect the most. Uh, the technical overview can be found on the link, but the idea for the post content uh, and how it's stored inside the database, it is still using HTML and it uses uh, HTML comments as the, as the demarca demarcation inside uh, the uh, content to make explicit the difference between uh, individual blocks. There is also this concept we will talk about this today of static and dyna dynamic blocks. So basically static is something that contains only HTML code, but dynamic blocks is something if you want to provide, for instance, the list of latest posts. So it changes uh, very frequently. To do that, we have, we provide a PHP solution which allows you to uh, uh, render on the PHP site and display on the page. Uh, 
Also, I want to mention that all of that you have seen is JavaScript based. So on the client, it's all driven by the JavaScript code and is using REST API, uh, the one that was introduced two versions back uh, to WordPress. Uh, those solutions to provide HTML always exist because there are businesses which rely on SEO on, or for instance, web crawlers needs to be still supported. So you are fine on the front end side just the admin part is JavaScript based. Uh, there are also a couple of uh, libraries that are used behind the scenes. The, in my opinion, they aren't that important because we built uh, on purpose abstraction layer over React and Redux just to make sure that there will be no ripping the history that WordPress depends on legacy versions of softwares like jQuery, Backbone, they are outdated and they cannot be uh, updated because of backward compatibility issues. There are also WordPress packages which we are publishing, uh, and this is just because we want, we want to have this. Uh, uh, we want to allow to use for all the plugin developers everything that Core uses. And there are also a couple of tools. There are advanced tools which, for plugin development, are necessary, but might be helpful. I listed some of them, but the most important part play uh, role plays here WordPress again, which is using to load assets. Uh, it, it passes uh, bootstrap data like user settings and so on. Uh, and also Gutenberg is built with modules. There are like, in my opinion, two types of modules. One are low level, which will be also published as uh, independent packages for external usage. Uh, like internationalization, date, utils, but there are also higher or higher uh, concepts like blocks, components, editor, everything uh, that uh, might be also useful. Uh, I said that before I want to repeat that again. Uh, the fact that we are using React doesn't mean it will be used in the future. It's just the best tool for do the thing we wanted to have at the moment. And this is very important in my opinion because uh, this editor is built on components which are composable and uh, we want to make sure that HTML becomes the like, uh, implementation details and it's not the main factor you discuss when you are building your plugins. And it also uh, allows to build your plugins uh, by composing those components, it's quite similar to how you build with something with leg, Lego pieces. And also we talk about, about those blocks. Let's take a look how it looks uh, behind the scenes. So uh, everything is wrap, like enqueued by PHP, uh, which provides JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. But HTML part is pretty tricky because it's contained inside the JavaScript code. And CSS is sort of inside, so in the core, it's sort of inside also JavaScript, but it's then put outside of it. Uh, we will talk about, about it a little bit more because uh, the next session will cover that in depth. I'm just leaving the link here for future reference. Uh, I will share those slides later so you can catch up with something. And this is this is example of this very, very simple block from core, which is separator. And in like basically we will talk about it in much more today, but I want to emphasize that every block has its own name to, to be represented. And there are two concepts, edit uh, function or component is something that is displayed inside the editor. And there is also save. This is something that your representation from editor is serialized into HTML representation. And also blocks are composed out of components, again, like Lego pieces. And you can see also here that there are low level components which are glued together and bundled by higher uh, level components and then by the block itself. This is part of the edit uh, uh, function which is meant to display this representation inside the editor. 
And there is also some basic support for teams. Uh, during the demo, you saw the Gutenberg starter team, which should be a backbone for creating uh, teams. It still has some rough edges, but it will for sure be improved in the future. And here's the link for the team. There's also some basic theming support using add team support function for colors, alignment, this full, full screen alignment. And there's also very interesting comp, uh, co uh, concept of templates which will evolve during the customization phase. At the moment, uh, it uh, works using code. And basically it allows to set a couple of blocks with predefined attributes and uh, placeholder prompts. There is also uh, uh, an option to lock. So when you use this kind of uh, code, then you will have, when you open your editor, you will see uh, editor field with some blocks which you just need to fill in. And then that's all you need to do for the uh, content, which is similar concept to C custom post times. Uh, another important uh, thing for plugin development will be extensibility and we want to have uh, introduced a structure for that because at the moment everyone can update basically everything inside. But we want to have uh, common flows for the things you do. That's why there will be uh, more menu uh, in the top which will allow you to add your own action or reference to the another concepts which is sidebar, so you will be able to put all your management of some advanced concept inside this toolbar on the right side, which on mobile takes full screen. And there's also a concept of screen takeover. If you want to have some configuration and like this, this will be pretty handy. And as I said, we want to have like fluent flows, which will be re repeatable between uh, plugins and there are also another features coming up next, but this will be after the uh, initial release for sure, which is uh, block comments or block annotations. So we'll be able like in Google Docs, comment on the editing content so people can share some opinions. And there's also a proof of concept for collaborative editing. At the moment it works for two peers using P2P protocol. So this will allow to uh, basically lock the blog that someone else is editing and then you will could edit the same content uh, using many peers. And also let's talk a bit about the future. And so the first important part, match proposal hasn't happened yet, but it can be a matter of days or weeks. Uh, I don't know, but there are some initial discussion happening. Uh, Gutenberg is not a page, bu page builder yet, but it might become, uh, if we don't know, it's like still under exploration. There are lots of uh, ongoing talks about that. But definitely it will be possible to create the same way as you could create content templates for your, uh, for your pages. Uh, we want to explore it a bit further. It, the, there was an issue with React patent clause in the past that we explored different frameworks like Vue, Preact, and in the future, maybe it will be possible to use something different uh, and that would be supported by the core. But uh, as I said before, we don't want to uh, lock down us with any framework. And maybe in the future, this will be also uh, ported to the front end because all you, s all you saw before is only inside the admin interface, but there, Everything that is displayed outside is just the plain HTML content, which is not the best in many cases. Uh, there is also another important thing because we introduce a lot of advanced tooling and also there will be new APIs. That's why we want to have starter kits and usable scripts. What's that? Uh, mm, so we, as I said, it's very hard to start uh, JavaScript project. Uh, you need to have knowledge about the tools and stuff like this. Uh, first of all, we want to provide a way to work with JavaScript using the same code you would write uh, today uh, inside your plugins, but using our APIs. 
and but some people for sure will do some advanced thing uh, advanced uh, work and they need to have support for the whatever we have so idea is borrowed from the javascript community all the major frameworks have their all cli tools and also uh, wordpress have wp cli and it's possible as of today you will see it later uh, to generate your uh, like the scaffold of your block uh, using command line and uh, another thing is uh, the repository we are started work on which uh, uh, is also used by core and the idea is that whatever core use this is also available for the plugin developers so they could use the same tooling and the, the same configuration we have but they are for the plugin development at the moment we have support for unit testing which is maybe not the most important part but we are working on other things and especially on the build which is quite complex if someone is aware of of that and also we have those shared packages so the idea is that all the building blocks that are used inside the wordpress will be available uh, for everyone Also, we will talk about later, I will just keep it now. I have those slides, uh, how you can get involved, but probably we can repeat that at the end of the day. And also, it, during, during the conference, I will be at the Gutenberg booth, which will be uh, there, and uh, people will be able to interact with Gutenberg, and I am happy to help answer your questions during the conference. Also, today is a great moment to ask anything you want and yeah that's all i've got uh, we probably we will do our best to answer you all your technical questions throughout the day but if you have anything related to the presentation now so i'm, I'm just going to ask if you have a question that you can do it into the mic for the live stream so raise your hand if you have a question for greg is this, is this currently live or can you yes yeah, he's the this this is currently live yes <laughs> Can you tell me what uh, or how Gutenberg will affect page builders like Beaver Builder, Divi, uh, etc.? As far as I know, they they we are in touch with some uh, some uh, page builders, so they want to build on top, on top of Gutenberg, so they will exist. They will transform uh, all the code base just to be uh, compatible with whatever we provide, and sort of uh, this will help to shape them to have common APIs then they can depend upon. So, great. Right, next one here. Is there a way to restrict certain features like uh, styling and changing font colors, uh, etc., to certain users? Oh, uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I saw a plugin which uh, which restricts blocks, so uh, every block has lots of settings, and you can restrict them for given uh, roles, and also for the front end display. But like individual things, there is there are a couple of ways of to modify your blocks. We we, we are going, uh, at, we are already using. Uh, JavaScript implementation of hooks, hooks, which is basically ported from PHP, which will allow to do sort of things like that. Yeah, Greg, I was going to ask, couldn't you use the filter that runs on the save to like validate, say, uh, like if there was a control for, you know, font size and say, you know, hey, if it's greater than 48, bring it down to 48, or if it's less than 12, bring it yeah. up to 12. Couldn't we do that filter? Yeah, for sure. This is something. It's well, it's JavaScript. Uh, so what we do is we expose everything un un under the global. So you can go cr go nuts and change everything if you really need. But we want to we, show we, those features to these users. Yeah. Yeah, we we definitely want to work much more on the ext extensibility part, especially for the code base. Uh, but also, it's like. Everything will be uh, based on the real need, and we don't want to come up with something that won't be used by users. 
So I've been playing around with Gutenberg, and even when creating simple blocks that uh, are not dynamic, I'm just saving, and it, the save method saves everything as HTML to the database. But for me, that has been troublesome because if I want to display something differently in an RSS feed versus normal content, is there a clean way to do that without doing a dynamic block? Oh. Render callback, maybe? <laughs> PHP render callback that yeah, like checks what type of request yeah, it is? Yeah, probably you, you could, because uh, in fact, yes, that would work, yeah. Thank you. I mean, because uh, when when you are dealing with dynamic blues, then usually you uh, return null just to take everything to the PHP side, but you can also generate a HTML code will be like a default one for the front end, but for the RSS feed, you would just provide a different representation with render callback. It will provide you the same content and you can enrich it, modify whatever you want. Probably it won't be as handy as it is, but I guess you have to do, to do the same with short codes at the, at the, uh, as of today, because you need to parse them. I have some uh, clients I would rather post to Facebook than to post to their website. So I'm wondering if the Gutenberg plugin would make them less nervous about creating posts. And is it currently in a state that I can give it to a client? To the client, it's still plugin. <laughs> uh, I mean, depends on the use case. If this is a brand new website, then definitely you should try it. Uh, if it's an existing one, it depends how much is customized. So that's, that's the way I would approach it. If it's highly customized, then probably uh, I would wait until it gets into the core before doing it. Of course, you should clone your website and start playing with it and find the rough edges. But as far as I know, if you are doing everything like properly inside, uh, like standards that are in the industry, then it should be fine. We are releasing like every week or two, so it's like there, there is everything, every, every it's any issue, then we always like quite responsive to the bug fixes and stuff like this. Yeah, well, we have ah, okay. <laughs> so, you may have covered some of this before I got here, but how are we theming? Uh, what's the workflow? Are we, we write the block in JavaScript and then are we going into a usual PHP and CSS workflow? Uh, and what styles are we defining in that CSS or is it React with inline styles? Oh, no. uh, <laughs> which the carry nation in me is getting out an axe about. Um, and so are we, so what can we lock down to, you know, make sure that we have a theme? Oh yeah, so, uh, okay. <laughs> so there's no magic inside React, so everything is just plain CSS. And also uh, the output of blocks is, trying to be as much close to whatever you would have now using TinyMC. So this shouldn't change much. And uh, I'm not the designer, so I'm not perfectly <laughs> one suited to answer this. But as far as I know, all the uh, standard classes are still there. Uh, so there is this align, full align and wide align thing, which is probably something new, which we should be covered. But this is like, I don't know. 100 lines of, of thing that probably will be inside the core. And uh, what else? I, I would add, as we go on today, Brian's talk and then what I'm doing, we'll see more of how like HTML gets into the post content. And as you see that, you'll realize that this question is so hard to answer because it's not much in terms of, we're gonna put HTML into post content and try and have like the same classes on it, the same structure as our goal because then CSS is an open question in a good way, yeah. right? As long as there's HTML with s consistent structure and classes, then 
if you know WP and Q script and CSS, you should be fine for your theme. It's just a matter of, okay, well, there's new classes to add CSS for. Yeah. But, so yeah. So it's not much new. It's a little conceptually weird. It will get to that throughout the day. Right. Did you had a question? Um, security. Any security issues? Oh, yeah. uh, Security issues. Uh, is it getting better? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll answer that by saying that one of the good things as a developer, uh, or, you know, plugin developer, is that in the past, before we had a REST API and before we had like this formal system for building interfaces, and so we were kind of all inventing it on our own, every developer was responsible for not screwing up. Literally, right? Like, it was my responsibility coding out a meta box to make sure that I had a way to save it, that sanitized it, validated it when it came back onto the screen, that it was safe, you know, that it didn't have access to stored XSS, that sort of thing. That was my responsibility as a plugin developer. Now that Gutenberg is handling basically everything from, like, I tell it, okay, we're updating this value, and the rest is kind of this mystery me. It's under the hood, it's now on core to make sure, and you know, I might have to register meta fields, for example, to make sure that there's a sanitization there. Mm -hmm. But because the saving is going through the WordPress REST API, it's now mainly, not entirely, but more of a core responsibility. Not to say that the plugin developers are off the hook, but more responsibility for security is now transferred to core, which means that there's less opportunity for plugin developers to make innocent mistakes, and, less opportun and more opportunity for core to fix everybody's problems at once. Well, but that's the thing. We, we're talking about ways in which like stored XSS vulnerabilities can be created in the way that MySQL injection attacks can happen. The more that that is a core responsibility, the easier it is for the, the, pro, the open source project to solve those problems instead of like educating plugin developers to go back and update legacy code. You see what I mean? It's just so much more efficient to develop, you know, we have one, one thing to work at. Um, I feel like there was a question back here that was waiting. Zach, you'll cut us off for time at some point. I kind of have a loaded one. Um, <laughs> for developers that have a lot of custom meta boxes in version four, is there any consideration as far as porting those into version five? I mean, are we looking at basically having to refactor everything in order to get it compatible in version five? Or um, I guess what considerations would you have for sites that are really, um, really heavy with custom meta boxes? So as far as I know, I was uh, the support is improving and for meta boxes, so it should work in like in mo most of the cases. But also, it's worth to mention that every big players on this field are working on their own compatibility with Gutenberg, so this should be supported on their side too. And uh, I don't know, I don't have much experience with meta boxes <laughs> myself. I'm a JavaScript developer. Um, I actually had a question. Can, are you able to toggle the classic editor in Gutenberg, or is it sort of just install and you're on the new? I mean, that by toggle. Like, so to there, toggle the classic editor. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's plugins already there, which allows you to disable Gutenberg completely, but we provide, probably we provide also ways to like pick uh, Gutenberg for only for post and pages, but for instance, for your CPTs, there would be your own solutions. If you want to have classic editor, then, then it's perfectly fine. And also to kind of answer both of your questions at once, there is support to mark a meta box as not Gutenberg compatible. Yeah. So that would cause the editor to fall back to classic editor. And there's also a way to mark a Gutenberg, a meta box is only for backwards compatibility. You know, um, do we have other questions? Anybody? Hello. Um, my question is about um, where you showed hinting uh, with the background colors and um, text. Is that an uh, accessibility feature, or is there a possibility of being able to put in helpful hints for when people are creating content? Yeah, this is one of those features. Uh, actually, we might come with more of that in the future. It all depends like, of, the, of the use cases. 
Uh, this one, what you, what you see, you can also use those components inside your own plugins and do something similar. So there is also this one with table of contents, which shows that uh, those headings should be like have a proper structure. And yeah, and when you are using uh, screen readers, then there, there are lots of accessibility features that help you navigate through the page. As a JavaScript developer, I'm curious if you can comment a bit on containerization strategies as, as you work on an environment and, and create something where people are going to be logging in and using Gutenberg and the separation of the front end versus the admin where, and then consideration of what NPM packages you're using and plugins that might, you know, have privileged access to infrastructure and databases, you know, at, when, when developing. Like, what, what, what thought process do you go through when you're considering, you know, package management or server management or containerization of the different concerns uh, in, in this model? Uh, I don't know if I properly understood the question, but uh, NPM on itself is something that you download and just uh, build your JavaScript code so it doesn't have anything with PHP side. In fact, we also did some proof of concept so Gutenberg as an editor can work independently of WordPress just doing some stuff because it's based on REST API so there is no uh, like anything that glues very strictly with PHP part. What we will have to, what we will need to have happen at some point all the settings that are on the PHP site will be will have to be exposed as a REST API endpoint too. So does it answer your question or? Uh, Zach wanted me to point out that there's also PHP server side rendering involved, which we'll show later today, as an optional way. So you can do everything in JavaScript front end. You can just save static HTML, or you can register a PHP function that registers it on the server side. Um, that's a key component of this, and then it's kind of what works best for you. Solution. Um, Andrew has a question. So talking about like PHP rendering versus JavaScript, do you think there's a possibility if you wanted to build your front end in React or something also using similar things as Gutenberg? So pulling out from the HTML comments, the attributes and things and rendering, maybe pre-rendering with Node or rendering with React on the front end rather than PHP? <laughs> This was on one of the slides, right? It's like definitely this is the one of the possibilities in the future, but there are some limitations. Like uh, nowadays in the WordPress land, there is so much dependency of, on SEO, which is HTML based that we couldn't take as big leap forward with doing that. But if you go uh, and see WordPress.com, which is B Calypso, uh, API, it's all JavaScript based with even Node backend. It just talks to PHP to return that data using REST API approach. So that's totally possible. Okay, I think we're out of time. Um, so everybody say thanks to Greg. Uh, this is a great, great introduction.